Jacqueline from Columbia University. For those that don't know me, I am the Shapiro Hall Director. And while we can't be together in person today, um, something I've really enjoyed doing throughout the course of this year has been doing monthly craft programs. So I thought it would be fun to do a virtual painting program. Today, we're gonna make this cute Mickey Mouse and I'm going to take you through all of the steps to be able to paint this. So to start off, you're gonna want your canvas. Um, you'll see I have some lines already drawn on mine. I'll show you where to put those on yours as well. You're gonna need your paints. Um, typical colors that you're really gonna want for this painting, black, white, blue, purple, red, orange, yellow, and maybe a pink. If you happen to have a light blue or some extra shades of purple or blue, that's cool too. Um, if you don't have paint and you're following along and you want to do this in colored pencil, charcoal, regular pencil, pen, make it work. I mean, it's just for fun, so art's all about enjoying yourself. Um, so to get started, I know it's going to be a little bit hard to kind of see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to narrate and then I'll try to hold it up so you can get a feel for what's going to happen. Um, I'll point out on the Mickey as we go along what we're doing. Um, but one of the easiest things I find when painting is to start kind of by drawing out the sketch on the actual canvas. Um, just basic lines, but that way you know where to put your paint. Since we're going to start with the background first here, so all these crazy colors kind of behind Mickey, it's good to know where Mickey is going to be placed um, because it's a lot harder to draw over the paint once it's already on the canvas than it is to kind of map it out and kind of just sort of avoid those areas as much as you can while you're putting the paint down in the first place. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with drawing Mickey's head here. Um, so it's basically a big circle with two smaller circles for the ears on top. And you're going to want that to take up almost like two thirds to three quarters of your canvas, whatever size you're using. Um, because Mickey's head is pretty large here and it's going to be like the prominent focus of our painting. Um, so start by drawing your circles and when you're done, you should have some circles that kind of look like this. I'll give you a minute now to do that. And while you're sketching that, I'm going to see if I can raise this up to make you at a slightly better angle. those three circles. The next thing that you're going to want to do is to kind of put where Mickey's face is going to be. And that's mostly so that way when we start to put down this color, we don't wind up having to paint a lot of white on top. While white will color um, cover the paint underneath potentially, since it's a pretty dark color, we don't want to have to put too many coats of white on top because then you're waiting a long time for it to dry. So you're going to start by doing Mickey's eyebrows by pretty much making an M in the middle of his head. And drawing those down and then you're going to draw out the cheeks and just kind of shape it off down here so it'll kind of look a little like this and then once you have that done you're going to do the arch in the middle for where his eyebrows uh, um, where his eyes start and then the, the two circles for where his eyebrows are or ovals i guess and rough shapes are fine. These don't have to be perfect. You're going to add in all the details with the paint anyway. Uh, this is mostly just to give us an idea of where shapes kind of might fall. Then his nose is basically a big oval as well. And then you can add the line for his smile underneath if you wish. So next up from the hands. Not going to lie, the hands are probably the most tricky part here. Um, if you're me at least, hands are not my forte. Um, but what I started with here is doing the arch to try to get the initial kind of chunk of his hand in. And then he's got a little curve along here, as well as his fingers kind of go up and then come down. They shoot up again, come down again, and shoot up and go down one more time with a small slant down here. Then you can go back and finish the bottom of this hand. And then you're going to kind of add an oval-like shape to the bottom to make the cuff of where his glove is. So I'll give you a moment to kind of follow along with that. I'm going to mark mine in a little bit more so you can kind of get a better idea of what it looks like. And remember, 
if these are not perfect, that's totally fine. You're going to be covering up all of these lines anyway. Um, it's really just to get the basic outline in. All right, so we have his hand. I added the two little lines on the bottom. I know it's a little hard to see. Um, and then we're going to add his other hand in as well. So same thing. You're going to kind of start with the large chunk part of the palm and add the curve down here. And then you're going to add the little bend for the finger, add the first finger, bring that down. You can add the um, cuff in at that point if you want. And then he has a second finger kind of behind his first finger. Um, for the sake of making the painting easy, it's helpful if these do touch the side of his face, then you won't have to fill in any gaps with extra paint behind it. Um, and then, so take a moment to do that. I'll darken my lines for you all on mine as well. So his second hand will be a lot like that. And then lastly, you're going to want to add in the spots for his arms. Um, most of his body and his arms are going to be black, but if you look, you can kind of see the white outlines for where his arms will be marked. This will just help to give you an idea of kind of the shape of his, where his body should be. So go ahead and add those lines in. Um, they are pretty thin. They both come out of the gloves. Um, and again, we'll be covering these with paint anyway, but that's okay. Just to get you started. So let me just respond. I see we have some comments here. Okay. So at this point, you should have your outline of your Mickey Mouse pretty much ready to go. So when you're painting on canvas, um, the one thing that you always want to do is start with whatever the background is before you paint the foreground. And the reason for that is if you paint whatever's in the front of the picture first, when you're filling in those background details, you have to be really careful to not cover up the stuff that you already put on there. But meanwhile, if something is behind and you're painting on top, it's going to um, wind up covering it up anyway. So it's, you don't have to worry about those like little small gaps of where everything meets up. Um, I'm also being blinded by sun, so give me a second. I'm going to lower this um, lines a little bit. I can't see. Okay. That's a bit better. All right. So now it is time to start our painting. Um, we're going to start in the upper left corner because I am right-handed and I don't want to get paint all over myself. I'm also going to pull my hair out of the way, so if anybody has long hair, you might want to do this because having it land in the paint is no fun. Alright, so in our upper right hand corner of the picture there, we have some black and some blue. We're actually going to start with solid colors. I know if you look at this or if you look at the picture that was provided originally, it shows a lot of like splashy colors on top. We're going to add those afterwards, so don't worry about that yet. For the moment, we're just going to block out solid colors, so that way um, you can kind of get a feel for what the background's going to look like before we add in all the little details. So take some of your black. If you have paints that you haven't used in a while, make sure you shake them. Um, warning, if any of you are working with acrylic paints for the first time, acrylic paint will stain your clothing, so be careful if you're wearing something that you like and that you don't want to get it on. Also, less paint is more. Um, you'll be surprised at how far a little bit of paint goes. This painting for the background, you might wind up using like a little bit more than some other parts of it, but start with less paint. You can always add more. That way you don't waste all your stuff along the way. Um, additionally, if you have your brushes and you get them wet, the paint will spread a lot better. Um, so we're going to start by putting the black up at the top, up here, and then we're going to kind of bleed it into some blue. Um, I'm also going to open our orange and our yellow because we're kind of going to blend this whole section together as we are getting started. So, uh, I might also open some white too. The white will help with the blending a little bit. Uh, but for the top part, it's pretty much going to be black, blue, orange, and yellow. 
In case any of you um, are wondering what to put your paint on, paper plates work great. If you don't have a paper plate, you can use a regular plate as long as you wash it off afterward. I'm using this piece of acrylic plastic that somebody let me borrow in a 3D art class when I was in college, and I refused to get back because I really enjoyed it. Um, my teacher, I needed something to use, and I asked him, and he gave me this, and I was like, okay, great, you're never getting it back. If you can get a sheet of acrylic plaster, I highly recommend. It's probably my favorite thing for painting. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start, um, start by getting your canvas a little wet. It's up to you if you want to paint the sides of your canvas or not. For this painting, I'm not going to. I'm only going to focus on the top part. Um, some people do prefer to wrap their paint all the way around. The reason that I mention that now is while you're doing this background, if you're planning to wrap your paint, it is important to do it now. Because otherwise, you're going to wind up trying to blend your colors after the fact when um, your other paint's already dry. Acrylic paint will blend really well when it's wet but it won't blend as well once it has dried. Um, and by won't blend as well, I mean it won't blend <laughs> once it dried. Um, it's not a paint that you can re-wet and kind of start with again. So when you're wetting your canvas, work around the Mickey ears, um, the outlines that you put in there. That'll, if, it'll stop the paint from kind of just bleeding onto that area. If you get that area wet, it will have the potential to have the paint bleed from like an upper area down onto that spot. So, once the area you're starting with is a little bit damp, go ahead, take your black paint, and you're going to start up in that corner. And I might have lied. I might paint my edges. Um, I do tend to like the look of the edge painted ones better. You just kind of have to be careful to not paint yourself and do it in smaller sections that way. Um, just go ahead and brush on that color. Don't worry about being too technical or careful with it. You're really just kind of getting the color onto the canvas at this point. I'm trying to paint it toward you, but we're working with the laptop um, webcam, so there's only so much that it actually is going to do. If anybody is following along and you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to get a chance to answer them. Um, so feel free to ask anything you might be wondering. Also, you might notice the areas that are wet, your paint looks a little bit more streaky. Um, that's okay. Let it dry. You can always layer more color on top of it. Um, but the wet really is going to help with the blending. So if you look now, you can see I kind of have an outline of some black in here. Um, I'm using a fairly large brush for the background. Um, it's flat, it's smooth, it works very nicely. Um, for most of this painting, we're actually going to probably be able to use larger brushes because there's not too many details in it. Um, so I'd recommend this, that way you're not spending so much time having to go back and dip your paintbrush in the paint every time. So now that we got the black in, the next thing I'm going to do is use that like medium to kind of bright colored blue. And I'm going to start putting that down as well. And as you can see, it's going to start picking up some of that black when I'm blending it in here, which is exactly what we want. If you notice that your paint kind of starts to disappear and it gets too black, that's okay. We can always go add some more blue after the fact. Just do a little at a time. And... And as you can see, like, I'm not being perfectly neat. We're getting some things on Mickey's ears. That's fine. Um, just trying to kind of avoid them as much as I can. And I'm going to pull the blue down right toward Mickey's head. Um, so you'll see if you're doing this kind of along with me here. The blues are kind of going to fade from like the blue black at the top to a lighter blue down at the bottom, which is exactly what we're going for. We kind of just want the colors to blend in together nicely. And you can bring some of that blue up if you want to kind of bring it up a little bit.
I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna add a little bit more on top of it. You will find if you're working with kind of cheap paint, it does pull up when it's wet, that's okay. It will dry eventually. Um, I'm going to switch over to trying to add the orange and the yellow in now. So we're gonna wash our brush off, dry it off a little bit. And then in the picture, we have kind of like the orange and yellow sort of outlining the side of Mickey's ear. I didn't make my Mickey go up quite that high, so my orange and yellow are kind of going to take up a little bit more room. But if you did, it's pretty much just following the curve of Mickey's ear. Um, keep in mind, the orange and the blue and the black might blend together and make kind of a grayish color. That does tend to happen um, because of orange and blue being opposite each other on the color wheel. That's okay. We will just add more paint on top if we need to. You can also, if you want to cheat a little bit on the spots where they're kind of coming close to each other, you can add a little bit of white um, in between and you'll find that your um, colors will blend a little bit nicer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for these areas and kind of streak it in a little bit. And then we're gonna add the yellow in on the far end and kind of blend the orange and the yellow together. Sorry, I forget when I pick this up, you all can't see what I'm doing. And then that kind of leads to a whitish light color down at the bottom. So I'm gonna blend that in too. start kind of layering my colors on top of each other a little bit to add some more dimension and some more depth to everything. Um, this really isn't a solid background. It can kind of go with whatever you like. If you don't like these colors and you want to go with other ones, that's totally fine too. Um, I have a darker blue as well that I'm going to throw in here for some extra dimension too. Um, but really, I'm just trying to get everything to kind of flow together in a way that sort of looks nice. area at the top. Um, I'm going to add some more white in. Don't forget to put your paints on the top if you are doing that, like me. to layer your paints you'll notice they kind of blend together a little bit better um, so right now my orange is looking a little wonky but that's okay we're gonna get there and fix that soon enough just trying to kind of start getting the blue sort of blended as much as we can Now, we're gonna try to work on getting that orange in there. And we're gonna use a slightly smaller brush for this part. 
um, still a pretty decent size, but a little bit smaller than we had been using. And I'm gonna work on shading it in kind of the same direction that my blue had been going in. Even though it's going on that curve, I'm gonna keep it with kind of the straight lines because I think they blend together a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna pull up my orange to the top as well. So that way I have color up there too that kind of matches a little bit. We'll add a little blue into that too. Remember, if you're using a lot of the darker colors and you're trying to use the lighter colors, rinse your brush in between, it'll help um, kind of keep the colors from blending more than you want them to. So we're starting to get a really nice blend at the top up here. Um, keep in mind, this is really, a lot of this is gonna get covered by the cool splatters anyway. So like, if it doesn't look perfect where it's connecting, that's okay, it really doesn't have to. Uh, you really just want to, the idea is to kind of get some color on there because that's what you're trying to get the background to be nice and bright and cheerful, kind of like Mickey Mouse. I'm gonna add a little bit more white in. A little bit more of this dry brush. I'll flip this back toward you all in a second so you can see what I'm doing right now. So I'm starting to kind of get everything to blend to be a little bit more cohesive. If you look closest toward the top, you'll see where I started to add the white in to kind of get the orange and the blue to blend together without being too um, gray in between. And then I'm just trying to kind of get that blue closer to Mickey's head so it's nice and bright down there. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit of white in the corner by Mickey's other ear over here to kind of blend with the yellow a little bit. As I was doing that, I pulled a little bit too much blue in there, so we'll add a little bit of white to kind of smooth it out. And then I lost a little orange, so we'll add that back on top. The one thing I really like with acrylic paints is they dry really quickly. So if you did something and you're like, I hate that, what was I thinking? It's okay, give it about two minutes or three minutes. Um, if you put a normal amount of paint on, give it about five to 10 minutes if you put a lot of paint on and you'll be able to erase that pretty much by covering it up with some more paint. Uh, this is where I was talking about thinner and like thin paint. Uh, what are the words I'm looking for? Less paint is more. Thinner layers, it's better than one thick layer because you can more easily um, cover up anything that you don't like if you do the thin layers in a shorter amount of time. Um, you do wanna make sure that your color pretty much goes to right to the edge of where Mickey's ear is gonna start though, um, for both sides because otherwise um, you're gonna wind up having a gap in between where Mickey's ear is and where your thing is. So if you look here, my pencil lines are now covered for the outline of Mickey's ears, just covered, just barely, but um, it'll stop them from you having to like go back and fill in little gaps in between. Okay, so now we're gonna move down and we're gonna again start on the left-hand side over here because I am right-handed and I think I'm getting paint on myself, but that's okay. Um, if you are left-handed and it's easier for you to work the other way, go right ahead. Um, I just don't want to drag my arm through paint. So the side by Mickey is right here, over here, has the same kind of black and blue for the most part, leading down to kind of like an orangey red color at the bottom. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'm going to add some red to my palette because I don't have any yet. 
And I don't know if you can see my palette, but I put out only little blobs of paint and it's still plenty of paint. So like I said, don't go overboard on the paint. You really don't need it. So again, you can wet it if you want to. This time I'm gonna not wet it. I'm actually just gonna go in with it dry and see if I like the look of that better for this. Um, and again, starting kind of with that black. Again, don't forget the edge. Um, and Mickey's ear is gonna be part of this, but his ear is gonna be kind of black anyway. So feel free to kind of paint that whole side where his ear is downward to where your color is black. Um, just so you don't have to worry about it later. And then from your black, you're going to mix in that blue again. I'm actually going to switch over to a slightly smaller brush over here just because his fingers are a little in the way. Um, so I have one that's just a little bit thinner. I'm going to probably use that one now. Um, something else, if you're new to using acrylic paint, um, make sure you don't leave your brushes out when you're not using them. The acrylic paint, because it dries really fast, will dry to your brush if it's left kind of just sitting out and not in water. And when that happens, your brush is basically garbage because it doesn't come back off and you can't re-wet it to re-moisten the paint. So I always recommend leave your brush in water. Um, it'll stop you from having to buy new brushes pretty frequently. So again, I'm pulling the blue down kind of on the side with the black, starting to blend those together on the edges as well. If you're going to paint your edges, you should make them look pretty um, and match the rest of your painting. Otherwise, you're going to look at your side of your painting and be like, why did I do that? And I'm going to add some more black up to the top, get it a little darker. So now I've got the blue down kind of by where Mickey's fingers start to curve down here. And now I'm going to start trying to switch it a little bit toward the white to start going to the yellow and the orange and the red down here. So we're going to clean our brush again. And add the white on. the white paint down. Um, make sure that you go again up against Mickey's fingers so that way you don't wind up with awkward white spots that you're not intending to later. And then I'm going to start adding that yellow in there. So the nice bright colors. Be careful that you don't mix it too much with the green, I mean with the blue if you don't want green to show up. Um, if you do want green, go right ahead. It'll probably blend lovely. All right, now I'm going to start pulling in some orange next. And then just your reminder, make sure you're pulling it in to your bottom two and your edge. Okay. So next part, um, even though we're going to be adding the red in, I'm going to add the orange completely covering this first. Um, that way when I blend the red, it's blending nicely with the color underneath it. 
So we got that down, and then there's kind of like a red splotchy circle area. I'm just going to dab that on. And this is actually what we're going to wind up doing with the other section at the top too, once it dries a little bit more. So you kind of get the blob-like effect in there. You can swirl it around a little if you want. We're kind of just going for some sort of texture. I'm trying really hard not to get paint on myself because I like this shirt. Probably should have worn something different. Okay. So now we're going to kind of pick up the orange and the yellow together in the same brush. And where the colors meet on our canvas, we're going to dab at them with the brush. It'll kind of, and then same thing where you're like orange and your yellow are meeting, you can do that as well. And it's going to give you a cool looking little blended section down here. I'm going to add some more yellow. And I'll hold this up for you all in a second so you can kind of get a better feel for what's happening. I'm actually going to look for a paintbrush that's a slightly different shape. This one's kind of flat and I want one that's a little bit more round. See how that goes. Okay. So this is adding a nice texture down here. I don't know if you can really see it or not. I think it's focused more on me than on the painting. But we're kind of going to continue that up with the colors that are underneath it now. So at this point, I am out of white, so I need a little bit more. And I'm going to pull that up. And for this, having a more dry brush works better. Um, it just kind of allows you to get more of that paint on there. Um, but also, you don't want a ton of paint. Less paint is actually more. Um, you'll get more of the spiky looking effect that we're going for if your brush isn't too oversaturated with paint. So what I'd recommend, put some paint on it and then kind of dab it on your plate or whatever surface you're using uh, to get some of that excess paint off. And as we're doing this, you're going to see the colors start to kind of blend together nice. Um, again, make sure that you're bringing them over. I'm realizing I have some spots that are missing that are not quite covered. Um, so I'm doing that, I'm dabbing the extra off, and then I'm just kind of hitting my brush onto my canvas. Trying to make those little like firework looking shapes. And now I'm going to pretty much start just filling this part in with the black to get some of the darker color up here. And you can drag your colors down into each other as well. Um, so that way they blend a little bit. If you've noticed, I haven't rinsed off my brush since I've been doing this because it keeps the color underneath it. Um, so that way, as you're painting, sometimes the lighter colors will come through in the darker spots, um, and it gives it a little bit more texture that way. So I'm pretty satisfied with how the bottom part is looking right now. Um, I am going to add just a little extra to the yellow down here that has the black in it just to Throw it in a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit more to the red. Okay. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with that part. So now that the top has dried a little bit more, we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing with the top under color here. Um, for the sake of this part as well, we're going to rotate so you don't get it all over you. And again, just start in the corner of your choice. I'm going to start with the lighter colors this time around and work my way to the dark because I think that worked really nicely on this side over here. Keep in mind, if you did rinse your brush off in between sections, um, it's going to be a little damp. 
So just make sure that you extra dab the paint off so you're not carrying over too much unwanted paint when you're dabbing onto your canvas. And you can put like multiple colors on your brush at once if you really want them to kind of blend in nicely. Um, I'm doing that with the orange and the yellow right now, and I'm going to do that with the orange and the white as well. Um, it'll kind of just make those little fireworks multicolored to begin with. And it's okay if you can see the color underneath. We actually want some of that color to bleed through. That's why we painted it down first. Um, so don't be alarmed if your spots are not covering everything. They really shouldn't be. It's kind of just, so if you look, we're starting to get the texture up here as well. And I need a little bit more of this lighter paint. Now we're going to start going a little bit darker as we go toward the corner. Again, remember, you can sprinkle in any of the like dots along the way that you like. So like I'm adding some black ones in now um, that are a little bit drag a little bit more into the lighter section. Um, the dimensions will look nice when you do that. Because the sky doesn't randomly just stop and become black. It has other colors in it at the same time. If you want something interesting over in the black, you can add like a little orange couple specks over here. And kind of pull that color into the darker section. And once you get it kind of where you like it and where you're satisfied with the overall look. You can stop. It's like, I'm, I wish it would focus on this. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make it do that. But I promise you, it looks pretty spotty. Um, and now we're gonna do our last section of the color before we get to painting Mickey. So you might wanna rinse your brush off again. Um, I find that that has been helpful. So I'm gonna go back to my larger flat brush again to get down the initial paint, and then we'll do our spots again. So in this time, we're gonna start at the top because the top is the lighter part. So we're gonna start with like the yellow and the orange, I mean the more like white and light orange, and then we're gonna transition down to like a darker red, darker orange color down at the bottom. And again, make sure that you're not forgetting to do your edges, because I almost did just now. For this part, I'm keeping it pretty simple. I'm really just blending my yellow into my orange, and I'm going to blend my orange into my red for the background. I'm adding a little white in there to kind of lighten some of the spots and darken others, but all in all, we're keeping it pretty basic. I don't know if you can hear the wind behind me, but it's crazy windy here right now. 
So if you hear a weird whistling in the background, that is what it is. All right, I'm going to bring my darker orange down the side of my canvas a little bit. And as we get to the bottom, I'm pretty much just going to fill it in with the red because that's going to be the darkest color at the bottom here. So, as you can see, we have our kind of colors here. They're not super blended or anything, but that's fine. We're going to go over them all with that brush to make the little stars in a second. And that will kind of blend everything pretty nicely. So we're going to go back to our chunkier round brush with the looser things. I'm going to try to dry that off really well, too, so I don't get all of my bristles stuck together and get circles instead of little stars. And I'm going to start with the darker colors this time, actually. And I'm going to blend to the lighter color. Let me see if I have a slightly darker one. Nope, those two reds are pretty much the same, but it's fine. Um, I'm gonna use like a chartreuse, uh, burgundy kind of color because I don't want to bring the black over here since it's not completely black. Um, but I do want to get a little bit of extra dimension to the red, so I'm gonna add some of that darker burgundy to it. And then we're just gonna do what we've been doing all along, making little stabby fireworks. And as you go up, you're going to add some orange in. And kind of start to lighten it that way. And then as you transition, and yellows in. If you want your yellow to be a little less bright, feel free to add some white in there. And then as you get closer to the top, it should really mostly just be the white and the yellow, more white than yellow. I'm going to bring a little bit of that light color down into the darker section and a little bit of the darker color up into the white. So now you should have a background that looks a little bit like this. Um, I promise you it looks better up close in real life than it does on here, but it's really hard to make the camera do its thing. I'm just trying to I see all the people, everybody's comments. Um, it's hard to type with where the canvas is, though. All right, so now we're going to move on to actual Nicky. So we're going to start with his ears. Again, we're going to go left to right. So for the first ear, you're going to need like a darker blue, a purple, and black. And maybe a little bit of red if you want to put that in there to start with. If you have more than one purple, feel free to use it. Same thing with the blue. Um, if you only have one, that's fine too, though. We can make it work. I try to do like a lighter and a darker um, just because I find that it makes the shading blend a little bit nicer. Um, but one color can definitely work if that's all you're working with. Okay. So. We're going to use the big brush for this one again. 
And I'm gonna start with the black. And I'm actually gonna kind of outline the ear with where the black is. So if you look in the painting, there is actually a faint outline around the edge. Um, so I'm gonna try to get that down first. We might wind up going back to kind of touch that up in a minute, but just so that way we can kind of differentiate where our ear is in relation to our background. It'll be nice and shiny and wet, and it'll make it a little bit easier to identify. Yeah. Then once you have that in, go ahead and pick up either the purple, the blue, both. You're gonna kind of just blend those in a nice circle. Um, you're gonna basically follow Mickey's ear shape and just start mixing the colors in. Find this nice light purple is looking very nice. Um, so if you happen to have a light purple, I recommend it. Now that I have the face down, I'm going to add a little bit of extra color on top. We're pretty much just continuing to paint along the circle of Mickey's ear. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that bright red in. You'll see, you kind of get like the colors going there. Uh, I'm gonna keep blending till they're all a little bit more melted together, but kind of a wide variety range of colors happening. Unlike our edges, we are not gonna be covering these with little fireworks. So just kind of paint them and blend until you get a look that you like. Um, and then once you do, I do recommend kind of putting that black outline sort of around the edge again, just to give the shape of the ear back in there. I'm kind of just following the curve and adding sort of like highlights along the way that are going to be a little less blended, but a little bit more bright on the color aspect. So that way they pop out a little bit. And that's where you just want to make sure you're following that circle shape. That's how you'll get them to kind of look like they belong versus they're out of place. Okay. So that's going to be it for the one ear to start with. And then we're going to move to the other ear. So for the other ear, it pretty much goes from black down to red. Um, it's the same thing though, you want to keep that curved shape as you're going. You just, rather than being more like fully circular like this one is, this one's kind of going to go like in arches, upward or downward, depending on how you start. Alright, so we're going to start with the black. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to trace kind of the outline of the ear first so we know where we're going to be painting in. 
And make sure that your ears are lining up with at least where your, um, out your colored background ends, so that way you don't have any gaps along the way. If you find that you do have a gap, um, I'd recommend pausing and filling that in before you do anything else with the ear. And the great thing is if you don't like your initial shape, you can kind of just repaint one in there. So I'm kind of reshaping as I go to make it a little bit more circular. Um, you can do that too. All right, now I'm gonna start at the top and I'm kind of just gonna follow that circle shape and add that black in. So I have some black, now I'm gonna start adding the darker, that burgundy color I picked out before. I'm gonna add that in next to kind of get those going. I am actually gonna rinse my brush off though because I find that the black keeps pulling into the lighter colors too much if it's still on the brush. So we're gonna work with a slightly cleaner brush. And you're still gonna wind up picking up the black from your canvas and that's okay. Um, but this way you're not getting too much black where you don't want it. And then after you get the burgundy down, feel free to go to the brighter reds. It's kind of going to go transition downward like that. And you also kind of want to think about where the center of that circle is because you're going to want to switch the direction that you're painting. So I kind of penciled in sort of where like the middle would be. And down here, I'm going to change from painting upward to painting downward to help keep that shape of his ear. I do think that this particular color might need more than one coat, but that's okay. You can always let it dry and add some more after. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my burgundy. And again, I'm just making sure to try to keep the shape as much as I can. Swirled it together a little bit just to make it look a little bit more cohesive. Um, and I just did that by starting in the cent um, the outer parts and kind of just curving in a little bit. And then I started in the middle with the light color and curved out. So once those are to your liking, we're going to move on to Mickey's head. So again, we're going to work back to front, which means that the darker part of Mickey's head is going to happen first. So we're going to fill that in before we touch the light. Um, for those, because there's not quite as much space on his head, I'm going to use just a little bit smaller of a brush to start with. Um, and his head is primarily the black and the purples again with a little bit of blue mixed in. So we're going to go back to that original color that we were using for his other ear. And I'm actually going to blend his other ear together just a little bit more. Because um, I kind of like the style from the left ear. I'm going to blend just a little um, before we move forward.
So we blended that a little bit more. I might add more to it once it's a little drier. But we're gonna start at the top now. Um, and we'll work our way down, like you said. So his top, I'm gonna start with the dark blue with a little bit of black in it. Um, we're kind of just gonna make that arch in between his two ears. You really want the top part to be the darkest part of this. Um, and so just make sure that you get that black in there nicely. Again, watch so you don't get paint on yourself. It's as much a reminder to me as it is to you all. And then we're gonna pull up some of that purple and some of the black. And you're kinda gonna go bring it down to where you arched his eyebrows at. All right, and now, we're gonna rinse off the black out of our brush again. Um, and we're gonna just kind of switch over to the lighter and the darker purples. So we're gonna bring those down, blend the black into them just a little bit on either side. Keeping in mind, if you blend the light color up into the black, it will pick up less of the black than if you try to pull the black down into the purple. And as you go up to the top, if you pull up too much of the light, just add some more dark back in there. All right, now we're gonna add that darker purple. And you're gonna go right around to where the white of his face is gonna be. And I would recommend for this adding a little bit of white to it as well. Um, I apparently ran out of white paint, so we need some more. Um, just to kind of get the lighter sections, a little bit brighter. You can go ahead and put your light paint back over it. sure you do that outside of the other side of his face. Sorry, I realize I should be showing you this as we go along, but you can see how it goes from the darker to the lighter color as it goes down. That's basically all we're going for right now. And this one actually, this side of the face actually gets a little bit darker, so I'm going to add some of that blue in at the bottom as well in hopes that it kind of picks up a little bit darker of a tone. Painting. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, but you can see some of my color from underneath is still coming through. That's okay. We're going to just let it dry for a second. And um, as I add more color on top, it should hopefully stop that from continuing to be an issue. But the trick really is let it dry because otherwise you're just going to keep picking up your paint. So we have Mickey's face mostly painted. Um, now we are going to go ahead and actually paint the white part of Mickey's face. 
So for this, even though you put down the outline for his mouth, you can paint over that part. That's okay. Um, it was really just that way you knew kind of where that would be. Um, there's even a chance that you'll just be able to see it underneath. But just make sure, because it is going to be primarily just white for this section, make sure your paintbrush is pretty good and clean. Um, otherwise, you're going to wind up with a whole bunch of colors in it that you're not trying to have in Mickey's face. And then just kind of start filling in. We'll, work about, we'll worry about the actual lines around his face after the white is painted. So again, same as with the ears, if you realize as you're painting the shape isn't exactly the shape you wanted, um, you can always adjust the shape that you drew with your paintbrush. And you essentially can just make a shape that you prefer a little bit more. Also, if you got any paint on Mickey's face like I did while you were doing other stuff, you can kind of just cover it up with your white paint. Uh, and I know you might be asking, my canvas is white, why am I painting it white? Well, you want your painting to be completely paint, not blank canvas. So if you leave it without the paint, it's going to look unfinished. So I do recommend paint it white, even though the canvas is white itself. And in case you're curious, so the part over here where Mickey's hand is covering his face, I would still recommend paint the face underneath it. Um, it's just going to make it a little bit easier to make sure that everything is filled in nicely. Um, you can always go ahead, you're going to paint the hand on top of it anyway, so it won't be a problem. We got Mickey's face done. Um, we're gonna let the white paint dry for just a minute because I don't want it turning gray when we start to add the black paint. Um, so while his face is drying, we can actually start painting his hands as well because those are also going to be white. Um, so the spaces that you drew in for his hands, feel free to go ahead and add the paint on there um, and we will come back to his face, the rest of it in a second. And for the part where his finger is over his face, you are gonna wanna actually put more paint on top of that in the shape that his hand is. And that's the way the paint is in the same direction um, for his hand versus when you're painting his face, you're kind of going on the curve. Whereas his finger, it's gonna be a little bit more vertical. So you wanna make sure that the paint kind of matches the direction that it should be going in with everything else. Um, and if you just leave the paint from his face saying, oh, well, it's white, it's already there it's not going to match quite as nicely as you want it to. And you might be asking, hey, Jacqueline, why are we painting this when we should be painting the black part? And you'd be right, we should be painting the black part first, but, well, we did it a little backwards, so we'll touch it up if we need to. And if you notice that your um, paintbrush is picking up some of the pencil underneath it, honestly, don't worry about it. It's kind of just going to add to the effect of the paint being blended um, with like a shadow. Um, so it should really be okay. Don't worry too much about that. Okay. 
So now we should have Mickey's face and his hands painted white. Not that you can really see that, but pretend you can. So now we're going to go in and do his eyeballs. So his eyeball, because it's a smaller area, we're going to use a slightly smaller brush. Um, and his eyeballs are pretty much black to dark blue, along with the arch on his nose that is black as well. So we will actually start with the darker blue for this part, and we're going to work our way up to the black. So if you see, we got the blue kind of in there already. Now I'm going to put the black on the top and pull it down into the blue. Don't get paint all over yourself and your hand. And then since I accidentally covered up most of the black, we'll put some, I mean, most of the blue, we'll put some blue back in now. Lighter colors than at the bottom. So you'll have pebbles that kind of look like this. And then we're going to add that bridge for the nose. So for that, you just want the black, and you're just going to pretend you're drawing with the pencil, only you're going to do it with a paintbrush. So you'll have your nice little eyeball wedge. And then you got his nose. So we'll start with the black again. We're gonna make that nice little circle for where his nose is. And his nose is pretty much an oval. Um, so you kind of just wanna Make sure that it's around on the sides. And in the middle, they have um, the highlight. So we're going to do the black first. We'll add that little bit of blue in on the edges to make it a little bit more colorful, kind of like everything else we've done so far. I'm also going to go back and add a little bit more purples at the top here. So, you can see we have a nose. What we are missing right now is the highlight for the nose, but we need to let the nose dry first. So we're gonna come back to that in a moment. Um, however, if you look at the painting, or the picture, right underneath Mickey's nose, you can see a little shadow. We are gonna paint that in. So rinse your brush off so it's nice and clean. Take a little bit of the light blue. You might not have used this color for anything yet. Um, if you have a light blue, feel free to use it. Otherwise, um, you could mix your white and your darker blue to make a light blue. Um, and you're just going to bleed that under his nose a little. This is kind of just going to give it a little shadow effect. And if you don't like exactly where it's placed, you can always cover it up with some more white, which is what I'm about to do, because mine got a little crazy. Yeah. 
just be careful around your nose. The paint is still wet, so you don't want to accidentally uh, blend it in. But remember, if something doesn't like it, just let it dry and cover it up. So while our nose is drying, we can do the mouth. Um, so I'm gonna give Mickey a big happy grin. I'm actually gonna use a slightly smaller brush for this because um, I found that the one I was using for the nose was slightly too big. So we're gonna use a little more brush, still kind of square. And I'm just gonna Fast is easier than slow when it comes to making lines when you're painting. Um, so I do recommend, try not to go too slowly because it'll actually make your life harder. So now, Mickey's got a nice big happy smile. And while our nose is finishing drying, we can actually go ahead and we're gonna use that same size paintbrush to do the outline around his face. Um, so really you're just gonna go around the edges of the white and kind of put that black, some more solid outline in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect or equal all the way around, it is paint. Um, so it's fine if it's a little bit on the varied side in terms of like the actual um, thickness of the line, it will look okay. Um, and if you don't like it, just cover it up. that right to where his hands are. Okay. So now while we wait for our nose to continue finishing to dry, um, one of the things that we're going to do is paint in the black part of Mickey's body down here. Uh, so if we look at the painting, we're going to pretty much be filling in any of that remaining white space with the black. Um, we did adjust this a little bit. I made it so the mouth is just kind of the whole bottom part because um, it was a little bit easier. Um, but pretty much any space that you have left is just going to get filled in with black. And as you go toward the bottom, you can add in some um, darker blue or purple if you want, maybe a little red. Um, and don't worry about the lines just yet. We're going to add those afterwards. And this is where, when I was painting before, why we paint the background first. So now we have to watch for our hands. If you do happen to paint over your hand by accident, I mean, just let it dry. We can go back over it. But just be careful because you are using a dark color. Um, so it will take a few coats of paint likely to cover it up um, with the white. You can bring in that purple wherever you like. Um, if you like the red or you like a blue, feel free to bring that in as well. Um, it's just kind of to give your Mickey a little bit of extra color to work. I 
I am going to outline kind of where his hands are because it's a little bit hard to tell where the white paint actually ends and where your canvas starts. So this way I don't accidentally paint over his hands. And you can do something like this too if you like. I'm really excited to show you this last part once we get all the details in because it's probably the most fun you're going to have with paint ever. <laughs> So if you look, I kind of outlined Mickey's hands um, just so that way I don't accidentally paint over the area. And again, as we go toward the bottom, if you are painting, just make sure that you add the black underneath um, so that way your canvas is actually fully painted around the edges. Um, don't forget that spot down there. It's easy to forget because we haven't done an edge in a while. And if you notice, I'm actually putting down all of my black before I add any other colors in. I think just for the sake of the fact that Mickey's pretty dark on the bottom, it's going to make my life a little bit easier uh, rather than trying to blend all the colors right away. I really should have probably used a bigger brush for this. It just happened to be the one in my hand when I already had black paint on it. So if you are a little bit behind me and you're catching up right now, a bigger brush for the black is probably more useful than this little tiny one. I think I'm running out of black paint again, so I'm going to get a little bit more. Okay, so now we have our Mickey. He's looking nice and black down here. Um, so our next step is going to be to add some of those fun little highlight colors in there. Um, I'm actually going to just adjust this arm slightly up here. So we're going to add some of that blue on the bottom. Just give Mickey some dimension. A little bit of purple, maybe. maybe a little bit of really light blue for fun. And then we're going to add a little bit of red in just to kind of blend it with the side over here a little. Same thing on the other side because there's red over there too. And 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of just bring that blue up toward his middle as much as I can. So we have some extra colors kind of on the bottom of Mickey, giving him a little bit more texture. All right. So now, while that's drying, before we add his arms and highlights down there, we are going to clean our brush off and do the white for Mickey's nose. So for that, we are just going to get some white up on our brush and right in the middle of his nose, make another oval. And apparently I'm out of white paint again. So we're gonna use a little more white paint. And the nice highlight on that. And it does have a little bit of light blue on the outside, so if you want to brighten it up a little, feel free to add that in. So when you're done, this new kind of looks like that. Okay. So now that his hands have dried a bit as well, we're going to go in and add the lines to his hands so that way we can tell what the fingers are versus what the hand is. So if you can still see your pencil lines from before, great. Um, if not, well, we'll just kind of freehand it. So I'm going to start with the arch. And again, I've gone back to my small brush because it makes things like this a little bit easier. And then I'm going to rotate this so I'm not sticking my hand completely in paint. And I'm going to do his finger, which kind of comes out a little bit and then comes up. And then it's going to go down and curve. But I can still see a few of my pencil lines, so I'm working off of that because I was pretty happy with where they were placed before. The biggest thing is just make sure this is on the outside of the white um, and that you don't have any awkward white sticking out from the edge. Because if it winds up kind of in the middle, it will look funny having extra color. Thanks guys, I see the comments. <laughs> ah, sticking myself in paint again. I think that's my biggest challenge with this painting. How to not paint myself in the process. All right, so his arm is gonna come, I mean, hand is gonna come down. It's gonna go out for that part. And same thing as before, even though the color kind of behind it's already black, we want to make sure we fully outline it. Um, that way the lines make sense and they're not going the wrong direction. All right, so hands, not exactly my forte, but you get the idea that that's supposed to be a hand, I hope. So now we're gonna do the other hand. Um, actually, before we do the other hand, something else that we haven't outlined yet is Mickey's outside of his head. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now, just so that way it's not in your way, or this wet hand isn't in your way. So just wanna do the same thing you've kind of been doing, put that nice outline around it. 
You really want to do that with the ears as well, so they all look kind of a cohesive outline. And blend those right in. that when this dries like some of it you really can't see where the outline is that's okay it's more that the stroke is there should you be able to see it if you went down onto the edges um feel free to drag your outline down there too if it's kind of harder or more in the way don't stress too much about it I'm going to fill in here a little on the side over here. Okay, so we filled in almost everything besides, just don't forget to do down here on his mouth as well. Um, you want a nice strong solid line there too. So now our Mickey is pretty much fully outlined. Um, he looks nice and strong on the edges. So we're gonna do our last hand, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the highlights, and then we're gonna have some fun with paint, in case you weren't already having fun. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna start with the arch in the palm of his hand. Uh, so I'm gonna bring that right up to the edge for his mouth. I mean, his um, face. And that kind of curves in a little bit. All right, it's going to go. I'm actually going to do the top of this finger so I know where it ends. And then I'm do this. Finger over here, and then I'm going to just make that line apparent that it's actually top one. Again, just being careful of your edges. Um, if they're still damp, my hands and arms are getting covered in paint. That's okay. Just don't get it on your clothes. So the second hand, looking like that. I'm actually going to bring down this piece just a little bit more because it looks like it should come down just a smidge farther than I have it currently. So down a little bit. Um, I'm also going to bring this edge in just a little bit more on where his glove is. Uh, it tends to go in a little farther than I have it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit more. All right. So now, as long as your bottom part is mostly dry, we can go ahead and add in the arms. So we're just going to use, you can either use a white or a light blue. I'm going to use white for this. Um, but basically, you're just going to kind of draw those four lines um, so that way you can identify where his arms are in relation to his body. Um, so if you've been using your skinny brush for black, make sure it's washed good for this so it doesn't 
wind up making gray lines. That's not what we want. And you're just going to make four short, nice little lines. Mickey's arms are pretty skinny, so for that glove on the right-hand side, just make sure you don't make his arm itself too wide. So if you look, now you can see he has arms. All right. So at this point, you have one of two options. You can sign your name and be proud and be done. Or we can have fun. I'm going to have fun and do this next part where I get to fling some paint onto my canvas. If you would like to join me, great. Stick around. I'll show you how it's done. Keep in mind this is messy um, and you will likely get paint all over the place. So make sure you put down a tablecloth and kind of back away from your clothing. So we're going to put our painting back down. All right. Now for this next part, you want a dry brush. You don't want too much paint on it um, because you're really gonna be dipping it in and winging it at your painting. Um, so I'm gonna use this brush right here. We're gonna see how it goes. I might wind up switching to a smaller brush, but this one's got a lot of bristles. They're pretty loose. Um, so I'm hoping it will work out interestingly. I know you can't see my face right now, but I really want you to kind of be able to see the painting because that's the more important part of this. Um, and I don't want my laptop too, too close because I don't really want it also covered in paint. So I do recommend clear out your workspace uh, so you don't cover things that you don't want in paint in paint. Let books. All right, so this part is how we're gonna get all these cool squiggly things. Keep in mind, um, when you're flinging paint, you don't have a complete control over where it's going, so there is a chance it might wind up in areas that you don't want. Um, you kind of just have to be okay with that and hope for the best. Um, so we are going to start, by, you can pick the color of your choice that you wanna start with and kind of decide where you wanna put it or pretty much all around our painting besides the section right here has all the colors, the orange, the red, the blue, purple, white, black. Um, down here also is kind of lacking in the blue, but everywhere else pretty much has everything. So I'm gonna start with the yellow because it's the lightest of the colors. Um, and what you're gonna do for this is not stick your finger in paint like I just did. Um, you're gonna stick your brush, get it nice and painting and you're just going to hold it and you're going to flick it and it's going to kind of leave like splatters on your painting. They are going to go on to Mickey too. It's there's no real avoiding it. Um, that's okay. It's just going to add some like extra texture to your painting. Um, but you really you want it pretty good and wet and you're just going to flick. This is probably my favorite thing to do with paint. You have to be okay getting very messy, um, but the results come out really cool looking. If you do it at different angles, your paint will fly in different directions. I do recommend doing that so your paints aren't all one singular shape. You're gonna get some lines that are longer, some that are shorter, but it's gonna look really cool in the end. So I'm trying to kind of initially flick the colors closest to where they are on the painting. Um, keeping in mind that we know that you're gonna have some other colors that wind up on top of them. All right, so we have a lot of yellow. Um, now I'm gonna switch over to some orange 
And this is where you really don't want to scrimp on the paint because the more paint you have on the brush, the better it tends to fly off there. Um, As you can see, like my Mickey, he's getting some paint on his face. It's okay, it looks nice. We're trying just to flip more around the edges than around the face. Um, it'll get some kind of colors and highlights and pops that way, but it won't make like splashes all over the place. So next up, I'm gonna move on to the red. We're gonna flick some red down here. Maybe some red up in the yellow spot a little bit. Get some maroon happening. And you can add some colors maybe to the spots that you didn't have them initially too. Like I'm gonna get some red up in the top up here. But it adds a really cool looking You just want to be careful not to add too many flicks because then it'll just kind of start to look messy. So we're going to wrap it up with a little bit. I'm going to rinse this brush out actually because at this point I'm switching to blue and I don't want to make green. Um, so give me one sec. Actually, we'll just use a different brush. We'll use a slightly wider one. Okay. So we're going to switch to the blue and do a little bit of that. And we're going to add those up here. So I'm avoiding flicking the blue on the primarily orange section. I did add a little bit in there just to kind of entwine the color a little bit, but I do want to keep the blue more on the blue side than on the other colors. If you get some larger streaks, that's okay. They look nice. All right. We're going to add, last but not least, a few black strokes. Let's see if we can get any of those in. And then we'll add the white. So I guess it's not really last but not least. It's second to last but not least. The white will actually be the last one. All right. Let me rinse my fingers off. <laughs> they are turning all sorts of colors. the mess off screen. Okay. Well, for the most part, that's white. All right. So we're going to add our white as the last color. And we do actually want a good amount of white in this to make it nice and bright. Yeah. Suds up your paintbrush. And the white can pretty much go anywhere on the canvas that you'd like it. But it will make it nice and bright. And I do think I want a little bit more red, so I'm going to add a few more red spots in here, too. All right. It's making more of a pink because there's white on the brush, but that's okay. I'm 
seen that one more time. And a little bit more of a darker color. I think that red really ties it in there. And if you feel any colors are missing, feel free to go back. I might add a little bit more orange. Let's see. But at that point, I think we're pretty much done. So I'm going to flip it over to you guys so you can see the final project. And here we have our Mickey. Um, if you want to sign your name at the bottom, that's something a lot of artists do. Um, I have mixed feelings about signing paintings, but I think I'm going to anyway. <laughs> I'm just rinsing my hand off because I'm covered in paint again. All right. So for signing your name, you want a small brush, unless you want a really large signature. Um, I'm going to do it in like, uh, mostly white, maybe a little yellow. And I usually just do a J and an A because my name is pretty long. But you do whatever makes you happy. All right, and I'm gonna stand that back up. So we're signed, we're done, it's official. Um, I hope you had fun painting along. If you like this, let me know. We can always do these again in the future. Um, but I hope everybody has a great day and stay safe and that I get to see you soon. Bye.